With nearly 70% of the global desktop market still running on Windows 10, we need to talk about this end of support date, October 14th of 2025. We're going to cover that in this video, and I'm going to tell you all the different options you have if you're still running Windows 10. And by the end of the video, you should be informed enough to make your decision when that time comes. All right, let's address this elephant in the room, guys. It is a little over a year away, but it'll be here sooner than we think. October 14th of 2025, Microsoft Windows 10 Home and Pro will no longer be receiving any security patches as of that date. What does that mean? Well, it means you're going to be screwed unless you go with one of these options. You're going to leave your OS full of holes like Swiss cheese. And the interesting thing, everyone knows this, uh, Windows 10 is creeping up on a decade old at this point, but it keeps growing as far as its market share. That tells me not a lot of people are adopting Windows 11 very well. I mean, that's also because the fact that vast majority or a huge amount anyway of these PCs, when we talk about total market share, are in businesses. It's not as easy to upgrade across your entire environment in a business as it is at home, right? You're not running, in a lot of cases, specialized applications, legacy applications. You need to make sure all those things are going to run when you forklift over to Windows 11. However, 70% of the market is still running on Windows 10. This number went up recently, believe it or not. Windows 11, the number went down from 28 to 26%. So that is very interesting. I do quite a few videos on Windows 11, and I know a lot of people are not fans of it. Um, I myself like it, but I get a lot of the complaints. Um, I can see both sides of the coin for sure. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what the options are. Okay, so the first thing you can do if you're running Windows 10 is you can upgrade to Windows 11 and try it out. Not a lot of people know this, but you can directly upgrade from Windows 10 to a Windows 11. And if you do it within 10 days, you can downgrade back to Windows 10. Now, when you do that, it'll stay activated for you. If you wait past 10 days, that's a different scenario. It's not going to be a directly supported method of downgrading from Windows 11 back to Windows 10. So if you're curious about Windows 11, you want to see what all this, you know, drama is about people hating on it people saying it's terrible and i'm not saying it's not because that's one person's opinion or a lot of people's opinion in this case and they have valid points um but again do your own research try it out if you haven't actually got your hands on windows 11 yet and tried it out try it out don't just believe what everyone else says because everyone has their own palette everyone has their own taste and things maybe windows 11 will be great for you um, when it comes to the security and the privacy and things like that, I have a couple videos out how to address that. I'm going to be making a more in-depth video soon on how to really turn off all those privacy concerns and make Windows 11 a lot safer in a sense of your privacy and security. Uh, so stick around, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. So that's option one, right? You can just go ahead and upgrade to Windows 11. At least try it out. If you don't like it, like I said, within 10 days, you can downgrade back to Windows 10. So I'll give you this article here. Uh, this actually tells you how to downgrade from Windows 10. I'm sorry, from Windows 11 back to Windows 10 as long as you do it within 10 days. So there is an actual built-in supported way to do that. So I'll link this article for you guys. If you're interested in trying it out, make sure you have this guide handy so you can revert back if you don't like it within that 10 day period. All right, now let's talk about Windows 10 security updates after the end of support date. So this is called extended support updates, ESUs. You can do this for three years after that 2025 date, right? So when that date rolls around and it becomes end of life, you're going to have three more years, but it's not going to be free. You're going to have to pay for it. If you're a school, you're going to get it for super cheap, a dollar the first year, and then it doubles to $2, and then it doubles to $4 for that last year, and that's per device. Uh, most of you watching are probably not in a school, so you're going to have to pay what the business and consumer price, which is pretty steep in my opinion to run this for three years. That first year is gonna be $61. That second year, 122 bucks, guys. 
And then if you stick around for that third year, $244. So if you add this up, you're looking at over $400 just to stick around on Windows 10 for three more years. If you're if you have a very specific case that calls for that, it's probably totally worth it for you, but I think for your average consumer, this is not the best way to go in my opinion. Again, you may have a very specific case and if that is the fit for you, go for it. I'm not knocking you if you do it if it makes sense to do it, but I wouldn't just by default go do this because you don't want to go to Windows 11. Do your own research obviously. All right, the next option guys. This is one I recently learned about. It's called Zero Patch. Zero Patch is another way to get extended updates on Windows 10 starting on that end of support date in 2025. This is not Microsoft updates. This is Zero Patch. It's different. You're not going to get every little bug fix and every little Microsoft Windows fix and things like that. You're going to get the critical security updates. It's pretty cool. If you haven't heard about Zero Patch, these are basically custom sets of CPU instructions or code sent directly to the processor to address vulnerabilities, critical vulnerabilities, that is. These require no reboots, and they're very easy to revert or get rid of. Um, this is $25 a year, and you will have the opportunity to get this for five years. So you can ride Microsoft Windows. 10 until 2030 using zero patch and it'll cost you a total of about 125 bucks but know what you're getting into this is not windows updates again this is just very serious zero day critical security i shouldn't say zero day these are the most critical vulnerabilities that are found out there in the wild and it's addressed through zero patches methodology Again, different from a Windows update, but it is a good layer of protection if you need to stick around on Windows 10 and you don't want to pay that over $400 for the ESUs for three years. All right. Next is what a lot of people think they can easily get, but not a lot of people fully understand, the Windows 10 IoT license. This is good until I believe it's like 2035. So if you have an actual IoT Enterprise LTSC license, you can run that until 2035, I believe the date is, and keep getting patches. Um, you need to know that you have to have this specific valid license for the IoT instance of Windows 10. And you also need to understand that this is not a full-blown Windows 10 instance. Out of the box, it's going to be lacking things like games and Cortana and different functions and features. It wasn't meant to be an end-user desktop OS. This is for specialized instances. The name kind of speaks for itself, the Internet of Things. So maybe you're running this under some type of appliance or something like that. Um, do your own research on that. But I see a lot of people commenting on my other videos. That's ah, fine. I'll just get the IoT and run it for another 10 years or whatever. Okay, good luck with that. Maybe it fits some use cases, but again, do your own research. This is not a normal Windows 10 instance, so I don't know why people think they can just easily install this and keep rolling. It may fit your use case, though. So, like I said, do your own research and know your options. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to talk about was just getting away from Microsoft altogether. Linux is a very good alternative for a lot of folks. Now, there are caveats with that, obviously. There's a steep learning curve if you've never used Linux before. If you're a heavy gamer, there are some games, Linux is growing as far as the compatibility with all the popular games, but it can't run every game right now. Uh, Windows is still kind of the king for that. But if you just go online, check your email, browse the web, maybe use some productivity software, photo editing, things like that, Linux is a great choice in my opinion, and it's absolutely free. And guess what? You can get security patches indefinitely. Just keep, you know, keep up to date with the OS and you can keep rolling. So Linux Mint, Zorin, there's a whole bunch of, I would say, user-friendly, like elementary OS. Those are good transitional operating systems in the Linux space for Windows users that are looking to make the jump over to Linux. 
The reason I brought up this page, this is my shop, bootableusbs.com. I have different USBs on here. I have actually one that's very cheap. It's $22, $23, dedicated to Linux. If you just want to be able to test out different Linux operating systems, this is a great one for you. Comes with multiple operating systems on here, and these, these run live, so you don't have to install them. You just stick in the USB, boot to it, and you can test out your Linux Mint, your different operating systems there. All of these have different Linux operating systems on as well. Uh, I have one called the Ultimate Persistent. This one actually has multiple operating systems that save your data. So if you want to try this out and not lose anything when you shut the USB or when you shut off the computer and pull the USB out, the persistence side of that actually allows you to save your settings, save your work, things like that. And then the Ultimate USB version 2. This is the greatest USB you can buy today. Uh, has a lot of the stuff in these other ones all rolled into here, plus a lot more. Um, so this is definitely an option if you're looking to, if you're thinking about or you hear a lot of talk about, well, just go to Linux. I know for sure that's overwhelming. Before I knew Linux, I was like, well, I don't even know how to do that. Like, what is Linux? How does it work? Do I have to type everything in a command line? Short answer is no, but definitely get familiar with it. With a USB like this or, you know, make your own, however you want to do it. I'm just giving you options. If you have the opportunity to boot to one of these USBs, you can test drive the Linux operating system for as long as you want. You know, you can do it an hour a day, shut it off. You can do it a week at a time, however you want to run it. You have complete control over that, obviously. And you don't have to worry about overriding your Windows operating system until that time comes. So this is a good opportunity to really get familiar with different Linux distributions, different operating systems, see which one fits your needs before you decide if you are going to decide that you're going to become a Linux user and just totally ditch Microsoft. All right, guys, those are the different options that you're going to have before that end date in October next year of 2025 when Microsoft officially pulls the plug on support for Windows 10. So if you're one of those in the 70% of the PC uh, atmosphere, I don't know why I said atmosphere, but yeah, <laughs> if you're still running Windows 10, guys, what's your game plan? Hopefully this video helped you and at least gave you some options and got you informed about you know the timeline and things that you should be looking into. If you have specific questions, feel free to ask. Don't hesitate. Drop me a comment and uh, myself or someone in the community can definitely give you some advice or point you in the right direction as far as whatever those questions might be considering the uh, timeline is, you know, like I said, a little more than a year away. You need to start getting a little bit more serious about it, guys, because when that date comes, I don't want to see any of you guys out there with Swiss cheese operating systems that are getting sliced and diced because I don't see this number of 70% going to zero by 2025. <laughs> That is still going to be a pretty big number, and I know not everyone is going to be um, upgrading or paying for patching or anything like that. So what I'm getting at is there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be exposed. Now, they'll still have antivirus or whatever their third-party protection may be, but trust me, when hackers know that a footprint like that is going to be out there and no more Windows patches are coming they're going to be writing some exploits for sure. Because think about that. If you write an exploit and it only covers 10 computers, you probably wasted your time. But if you start writing exploits that tens of millions of computers are vulnerable to, now that's probably worth your money if you're a bad guy. Hopefully none of you guys are. But uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here is it's going to be very important to protect yourself when that time comes because the bad guys know that this is a huge target. It's all over. It's going to be in businesses. It's going to be in homes. It's going to be in schools. It's going to be everywhere. So unless you're not going to connect your Windows 10 computer to the internet anymore, you need to do some research, look at these options I just gave you, and ask questions. All right, guys, let me know what you think. And like I said, check out my shop, bootableusbs.com. I think this is a great way for you to get in there and you can test out all these different Linux operating systems. And actually, I even have a uh, instance on the Ultimate USB V2 of what they call Tiny 11. So you can run Tiny 11, which is a stripped down version of Windows 11. You can run that um, kind of on the fly and it, it will also save all your work, but that'll give you an opportunity to get in there and test out Windows 11, at least to a certain extent. All right, guys, let me know. Like I said, are you still on 10? What's your plan? 
Hope you all have a great day. Until the next video, take care.